Have you ever hated someone so much that the tension between you just couldn't be contained without the use of 20 foot high steel fencing with a steel ceiling and a padlock door? Yeah, we've all been there. And that's why WWE came up with the Hell in a Cell match, which was once upon a time reserved for only the most bitter and heated rivalries, not a part of WWE's yearly calendar of many super exciting, not at all meaningless, gimmick pay-per-views. I mean, who could forget the groundbreaking and fresh rivalry between John Cena and Randy Orton that utilized the gimmick to its full potential at the very first Hell in a Cell themed pay-per-view in 2009? And if you think that sounds like one of the most boring Hell in a Cell matches ever, don't worry, at least you're not wrong. So while we fans and critics alike have grown frustrated with WWE's lack of meaningful uses for the cell, we can always look back with fond memories of the early days. And that's exactly what we're doing today. In fact, we're going all the way back to the one that started it all, the very first Hell in a Cell match to reconstruct how it all came to be. I'm Matt with LordsofPain.net, and this is Reconstructed Hell in a Cell 1. The first ever Hell in a Cell match was one of the first matches and one of the longest and most memorable rivalries in wrestling history. The feud between The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels started just three months earlier at SummerSlam 1997 where Michaels was a special guest referee in a championship match between WWF Champion The Undertaker and Shawn's biggest enemy, Bret the Hitman Hart. That title match ended after Shawn Michaels accidentally hit The Undertaker with a steel chair while attempting to hit Bret Hart, who had already used the chair illegally while Shawn was incapacitated. Michaels reluctantly counted the pinfall for Hart, ending what was only The Undertaker's second WWF Championship reign. And Undertaker, well, he's not exactly someone you want to upset, is he? The following night on Raw, an unapologetic Michaels blasted the fans and taunted The Undertaker, effectively turning him heel. Now, as incredible as this specific feud was, it also served to set into action a series of events that's arguably just as, if not more, important to wrestling history as the Hell in a Cell match itself. In the lead up to Ground Zero, Shawn Michaels was scheduled to compete in a tag match with Hunter Hearst Helmsley, taking on the team of The Undertaker and Mankind. During this match, Shawn hit The Undertaker with multiple steel chair shots, this time very deliberately, and it was revealed that Michaels had enlisted Rick Rude as his bodyguard. Before this, Michaels and Triple H were never seen as partners, and it was pointed out during that match that Michaels and Helmsley were reluctant to team up in the first place, even if just for the night. The following Sunday was Ground Zero, where Michaels and The Undertaker would face off for the first time in their careers. The match ended in a no contest because the two men couldn't stop things from spilling out of the ring and were going through referees like Jerry Lawler goes through wives. With plenty of interferences from Triple H China and the enforcer Rick Rude, not to mention half a locker room coming out after the match had ended in an attempt to separate Shawn and the dead man, it was clear that this feud simply couldn't be contained in a traditional wrestling environment. The match at Ground Zero, by the way, is fantastic. No one ever talks about this match because of how it's overshadowed by Hell in a Cell, but you should absolutely take the time to watch it. Not only is it a great match, but as I was saying before, it was an important time in wrestling history, and this match would mark the first time that Michaels, Triple H, China, and Rick Rude began to work together as a faction, setting up the foundation for Degeneration X. The night after Ground Zero on Raw, it was announced that Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker would face off one more time the upcoming In Your House Bad Blood event in a first time ever match dubbed Hell in the Cell. Now it's hard to say who exactly came up for the idea for the original Hell in a Cell concept. According to an interview with Jim Cornette, who was a key member of Creative at the time, he had come up with the Hell in a Cell match concept based on a combination of two other concepts that he liked. The cages that they used in Memphis that went beyond the ring and encompassed the ringside area, and the War Games cages used in WCW that had a ceiling and trapped its participants inside the structure. However, Shawn Michaels would go on to claim that it was a Georgia Championship Wrestling match, a 1983 match billed as the last battle of Atlanta between Tommy Rich and Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer that he had seen years earlier, and his suggestion to borrow the concept of a steel cage with a top on it that culminated in the creation of the first ever Hell in a Cell match. Michael Hayes has made the same claim, but Cornette has repeatedly recalled Hayes not even being a part of coming up with the match in the first place, and sticks to his story of War Games and Memphis cage matches being the true inspiration so it is hard to say who actually came up with the Hell in a Cell match. And before we get into the match itself, it is important to look a little further into the Undertaker storyline leading up to In Your House Bad Blood. As stated, the Undertaker isn't someone you want to upset. Prior to everything with Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam 1997, Paul Bear was tormenting the Undertaker after their falling out about a year prior. Bear betrayed the dead man at the previous year's SummerSlam in 1996, Taker later set Bear on fire because he's the goddamn devil, and that's what he does. 
During the lead up to The Undertaker's feud with Michaels, Bear was popping up left and right like a terrifying little harbinger of doom, preaching about spilling the truth of The Undertaker's dark past. How he murdered his parents by setting their family business, a funeral parlor, on fire. Very relatable stuff. Bear would also reveal that The Undertaker's little brother, a yet to appear character known only as Kane, who Undertaker assumed had died in that same fire, was actually alive and in Bear's custody. Now Undertaker would go on to rebuke these claims that he started the fire, claiming that he saw his little brother go into the shed with embalming fluid and that he should have stopped him, but that's all that we really get to know about this mysterious figure Kane until a little bit later on. The story is built up very slowly, which adds a ton of depth to it and really sets the stage for the debut of Kane. And now that we know the entire backstory leading up to In Your House Bad Blood, let's talk about the match. From the very beginning, the storytelling is on full display. Before the match begins and the cell can be lowered, Commissioner Slaughter is out at ringside with a referee checking underneath the ring to ensure that nobody is there and no one can interfere. After both men enter as the cell door is being locked, the typically cocky and confident Shawn Michaels goes into a full-on panic at the realization that he's completely trapped inside with The Undertaker. Michaels goes over the referee who's locking the door and starts pleading with him as Triple H tells him from the outside that everything is going to be alright. Michaels regains his composure and the match is set to begin. The Undertaker is very slow and methodical in this match, taking his time and dissecting Michaels who is still in desperation mode throughout most of the match. At several points, Sean tries to climb the inside of the cell in an attempt to get away, but he has absolutely nowhere to go and instead gets brutalized by The Undertaker on the outside of the ring through the early stages of the match. Michaels does get a small amount of offense in, using his agility and cunning to dish out some punishment of his own, including a brutal pile driver from Michaels onto the steel steps outside the ring, but it's only through the use of steel steps and a chair that Michaels is able to hold his own for any significant period of time. As soon as he comes to realize that there is no quit in The Undertaker, he just crumples. Soon enough, Michaels accidentally lands on a cameraman outside the ring and assaults the man in frustration after landing on him. This is some intelligent planning as it sets up a believable excuse to open the cell door to attend to the cameraman. The timing here is absolutely perfect. As the cell door is being unlocked and the cameraman is being helped up, HBK is in the middle of tuning up the band and nails Undertaker with sweet chin music, only for him to sit up almost immediately after being hit. Michael realizes he has a small window of time to escape the cell and bolts for the door, being followed by The Undertaker. And this is where the match goes from being memorable to being groundbreaking. The Undertaker doesn't let Sean get too far as the two men leave the inside of the cell. He begins slamming Michaels into the outside of the cell, and in a moment of desperation, HBK climbs onto the side and then the top of the cell, being followed by The Undertaker. There's truly no escaping the dead man on this night as he follows a badly busted open Michaels to the top of the cell, throwing him around the structure as Michaels continues to try and flee. Now HBK is climbing down the other side of the cell in desperation, trying to get away from The Undertaker but is halted when he gets a handful of his hair caught by the dead man, who finally releases Sean, letting him fall off the side of the cell and through the Spanish announce table in what was easily the biggest bump anyone had seen in the WWE up to this point. The dead man climbs down and continues to ravage Michaels on the outside before finally taking him back inside the ring to finish him off. Undertaker hits Sean with a choke slam from the top rope, then exacts his revenge with a steel chair shot right to the head in a moment of poetic justice, bringing the feud full circle from its start at SummerSlam three months earlier. As Shawn Michaels lays with his back against the mat and his face covered in blood, The Undertaker signaled that he was ready to finish the fight with his signature throat cut taunt that always preceded a tombstone pile driver. And then, the lights go out, an organ begins to play over the PA system, and soon, Dim red lights covered the entire ring and entranceway as Paul Bear accompanies a towering man in deep red and black attire, long black hair, and a now iconic red mask. Vince McMahon shouted from commentary the infamous line, that's gotta be Kane, as the big red machine made his debut and wrestling history. Kane rips the cell door off its hinges, quickly disposes of a referee on his way into the ring, and stands face to face for the first time with his brother, The Undertaker, who stared in shock and disbelief. Kane stared right back, tilted his head, slowly raised his arms to the sky and quickly brought them back down as fire shot out of the four corners of the ring. The Undertaker, for the first time ever, was caught completely off guard as he jolted to look behind him at the fire, only to turn around again to a tombstone piledriver from his brother Kane. 
who had just made what was arguably the most memorable and impactful debut of any wrestling figure to date and left as The Undertaker laid flattened out in the ring. A profusely bloody Shawn Michaels used every ounce of energy he had left to crawl over and cover the dead man with one arm as referee Earl Hebner was recovering just in time for the definitive three count to end the match. Michaels gets peeled off the mat by Triple H in China, barely able to move on his own as The Undertaker is beginning to stir, still dazed on the mat, to close out In Your House, Bad Blood, and the first ever Hell in a Cell match. Now there's really no debate that the first ever Hell in a Cell match was an absolute classic, earning WWE its fourth 5 star rating ever at the time from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and being the second 5 star match to include Shawn Michaels after his infamous ladder match with Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10. Believe it or not, this is the only 5 star match that The Undertaker has had in his entire career. Now Vince Russo recalled in a recent interview that nobody backstage knew how well the Hell in a Cell concept would go over with fans. He said, it could have been one and done with Hell in a Cell, depending on the match. It was a new concept, it was the first time we were using the cell, it could have bombed. Solely on their performance and their performance alone, it became a staple in the WWE. Russo would also go on to claim that he came up with the name Hell in a Cell, though Bruce Prichard recalls that Vince McMahon was actually the one to pitch the idea. In an interview with The Undertaker, although one that took place in the early 2000s, which is less than halfway through his career, the dead man, when asked what his favorite match was, would reveal that the first Hell in a Cell match with Shawn Michaels was his favorite. He cited the physicality and psychology of the match for making it his choice over his infamous Cell match with Mankind the following year, which many fans remember even better than the match with Michaels for the insane bumps that Mick Foley took during the bout. Now, Shawn Michaels would go on to recall, quote, I like it more than the one he had with Mick because it was 45 minutes it told a story more than theirs. Theirs was around two big bumps, ours told a story. There was a match, and then there was all the other stuff. Our match wasn't defined by what happened with two bumps. Kane has gone on to talk about the match in particular quite a bit for obvious reasons, but more on that in another video. Needless to say, Hell in a Cell 1 is a rare masterpiece of professional wrestling, a match that has cemented its status as legendary not just for how great it was and not just for who was in it, but everything that happened along the road to In Your House Bad Blood. And now that we've reconstructed the entirety of the match, sound off in the comments below and let us know, is this the greatest Hell in a Cell match of all time? Does it deserve to be remembered more fondly than some of the more brutal Hell in a Cell matches that followed it? What other matches and moments do you want us to dig down into the history of and reconstruct next? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Matt with LordsOfPain.net. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below to catch the next episode and visit LordsOfPain.net for your daily dose of professional wrestling.